most people in America are familiar with is and isn't lawful in terms of the actual law. The actual laws on American books are different than people's opinions about what they feel God's laws are. The actual laws on American society did actually come from some of the premises of our Bible because that is in essence the book that came across the seas when the pilgrims and the settlers came over to Americans. I often reference this because I see a very immoral society emerging. I see a hate-based organization through television all the time because they want to put on TV that it's so funny to have these America's Funniest Videos or these things that are sort of lark shows that make practical jokes a part of their entertainment network. While people do play practical jokes on other people, I have to ask you, how many people enjoy having that joke played upon them? Very few people. How many people like to have their humility shoved in front of a whole bunch of people on TV? How many people like to be harassed and harangued without consent? And how many people like to be embarrassed in front of their family and friends? Not many. You see, a family can humiliate and embarrass someone by doing improper, illegal, and highly immoral activities without the lawful consent of an adult individual. A human person in a family can lie about their rights, hanging on to a document that's long expired and displacing it across the community. A family member that is angrier than hell about someone's difficulties or challenges or loss of opportunities in life, a loss of productivity, a loss of performance from the loss of a family friend can also be reminded of their rights in life. People that don't remember their rights in life, people that abuse others in life, usually end up dead. They end up dead because they fail to recognize that self-defense is appropriate in America. Every human being has the right to protect themselves, but if we are allowing people from foreign countries bring in technologies and sciences and, let's say, drugs that harm a person's right to acknowledge what's happening to them, we have real problems emerging in America. At this time, I'm highly encouraging our lawful president to remove people from communities that participate in predatory games. A predatory game says, I'm going to abuse you without you ever knowing it. I'm going to use you without you ever seeing it. I'm going to steal from you and pretend it's someone else. And I'm going to lie to you about how I feel about your life. The liars of a community always think they have rights. They always think they have the right to solicit. They always think they have the right to be implicit with their ideas about life. But the liars of a community will walk by as, Hee hee, hee hee, did you know what I did to you last night? It's like that film, Did You Know What I Did Last Summer? And we have problems coming out of Hollywood. I highly encourage the current administration to get on top of that organization that rates films. I've also encouraged them to create some films that could be considered by some people's immoral standards propaganda when it's not that at all. It's time to re-educate American citizens about what is and isn't lawful. Isn't it appropriate to teach children in our communities and in our school systems the laws of America because most of them by the time they reach high school do not remember where their rights in America begin and end. I spoke yesterday at brief with some young people who are teenagers who by their own consent and their own permission and their own vehicles came to see me last night about the mainly the three R's and how the three R's impact our livelihood in the time of our life that it's essential. What I'm speaking about are the three R's that describe your role in your situation, regardless of whether it's a professional or personal one, the rules that tend to govern that social aspect of that relationship or the industry standards and quality service, customer service uh, protocols of that possibility or that profession or that career. And then, of course, the responsibilities that typically go along with a job description. And even if you're, for example, I gave a daughter within a family, there are responsibilities that your parents expect you to handle for the proper functioning of a family and the 
healthy relationships within the context of that situation overall. Most people in America are open to that ideology, but then we have people who live outside the typical constraints of what many people do as a moral society, but what I can tell you is not wrong in any way, shape, or form because of the factual aspect that if you are a person who believes in God, then you know that God makes everything from the beginning to the end of a lifetime. Meaning God assigns disease and God assigns those who not thrive, but God allows most people to survive. It's usually when human beings try to be God and Lord over someone's life, body in a way of human trafficking, or sexual organs in a way of rape and molestation, or secondary sex characteristics, which I talk about at regular nauseam, because my faith-based beard that took a year to grow was sexually assaulted, religiously hated in a jail situation in Indianapolis, Marion County, by the sheriff that held me within solitary confinement so that the only liabilities they had was on their educated, not at all, their improper employees who just thought they had the right to school me and educate me in terms of my abilities to thrive and survive in a situation that was incredibly illegal and highly immoral placed upon me by a female judge who eventually will lose her bar and will lose her opportunities in life. Now when I say these things it's because she doesn't realize how long it takes for someone to be found to be the perpetrator of a predatory crime. But from the minute that I was taken with into that facility, they discriminated. They stole all my property. They never returned my bags that were taken from me in the back hall behind a port facility, which is an unusual place to be removing people's things by two officers, both male and female, black and white, that should have been done probably in a, what we might call, orientation room or a processing room. But in life, we have moments of time to speak the truth that even the officers teased and harangued me for private medical situations that had nothing to do with the situation of which I was allegedly held there. But the officers, from the day one that she assigned that situation, which wasn't her lawful right under any standard of education, she failed herself underneath American law. She destroyed and obliterated international human rights law and she absolutely abused federal law with regard to me because when I left that facility, I was not given back and returned my property. Therefore, they were in violation of the Fourth Amendment, which says we have the right to our personhood, our paperwork, and our property. But how is a person held in solitary allowed? And I wasn't put there for any misbehavior situation. But who knows what the records say now? Because police officers in America and sheriff who are undereducated, undertrained, and probably underpaid, who love to have guns and hold collections of them of 50 plus at home, are the ones that are doling out the food and doling out the schedules and clearly thieving from people like me.